Hello and welcome. My name is Stephanie Dawn. I'm the chair of the Million Mom Movement. I am a Blue Diamond with Purium Health Products and I am a longtime environmental activist and uh, <laughs> I almost said certified, certified organic freak. <laughs> I've been a longtime proponent of organic living, organic farming, and um, it's my joy to be here with you today. And I'm joined by my council, who you, some of whom you're gonna be getting to meet today. Uh, the Million Mom Movement Council, we have six of us, um, and we are active uh, every day, every week, every month uh, in support of the larger mission uh, that Purium has. Uh, the mission of the Million Mom Movement specifically is to for a thousand women, men, concerned citizens to reach out to um, uh, 10 families in over 100 communities. So that's us, those of us who are Purium brand partners, that's what we're doing every single day. Uh, sharing uh, our own individual stories, educating, inspiring, and really helping people to make the connection between how they're feeling and what they're eating and what's going on in the world's, um, well, the US's and the world's food systems. So we meet here every Friday. We've been doing this since uh, January of 2020. And this is where we come together to really feel into our hearts, to our passions about the things that we take very seriously as, as moms uh, in our own kitchens, in our own pantries, and in our own communities. And so um, we, we began this six months ago because while I was excited that we had uh, an amazing product called Biomedic that I'm sure many of you are aware of that removes glyphosate from the body. While I was very excited that we had that product, what I knew from my own experience with my own son is that um, he got very sick eating Cheerios, uh, very sick. He had a, what I would term a compromised gut for many, many years. And I thought, oh, that's just how it is with Zephyr. Well, no, I was unknowingly poisoning my son. So as a mother, you can imagine how enraging that was for me to learn. And I just decided to use this platform to share with more people about what's going on with Cheerios, with General Mills. Essentially, they're selling us toxic food every day. Cheerios is one of the most popular cereals in the United States. Honey Nut Cheerios, I think, actually surpasses Cheerios. And it's a favorite. I just spoke with a, an elderly man the other day who eats it regularly. So it's not just for kids, it's for our, our, our elders as well, that, that, and, and all of us really, um, to really help people understand what's going on. Um, and it's, you know, it's outraging. So we get to come here, we get to share about our outrage collectively and, um, and really uh, uh, in the past what we were doing and I'm gonna have, um, well actually why don't, you know what, I'm gonna have our, uh, my fellow council member Carmela Velarde come on right now because Carmela has some incredible information that I wanna share with you. She's gonna, we're gonna start off with our hot, hot topic. There's been a judgment, uh, uh, you know, financial judgment against Monsanto, which are the purveyors of Roundup and, and, and you know, the, the ingredient uh, that is glyphosate, the main ingredient. Carmela, would you be willing to come on and just share a little bit about what we were doing prior at, um, uh, and what the hot, hot topic is for today? Yes, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for having me and thank you everyone for being on today. So we get to share hot topics during these one hour calls because there's so many relevant topics that we can bring up um, as activists in the Million Mom Movement and we want to keep you on the pulse. So what we had been previously doing was our petition, our letter writing campaign um, against General Mills to take glyphosate out of their, their products. And they are the number one company that has the most parts per billion of glyphosate in one of the most, actually probably the most um, widespread known commercial cereal that I knew even for me, I grew up to it myself. So um, the petition is continuing to go on and I wanted to just draw some attention on and spotlight an article that was released this past June 24th. And it was from, what is this place? It's the Sustainable Pulse. Speaking of the Pulse, right? We're trying to stay relevant and keep you guys in the know of how is Purium, our lifestyle, related to all this information? Well, 
we take a stand on toxicity in our foods that we're feeding our children, we're building humans, we're building our future. And so it's been announced that Bayer settles a glyphosate cancer lawsuit for, for $10.9 billion. So this is a win. This is a huge win and we wanted to celebrate it today with you guys. Um, and this is to settle the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma roundup litigation in the US. And as we know, glyphosate is what our focus is. It's been the most um, prevalent herbicide in the world. And it covers approximately 75% of the current roundup litigation. 75% is now covered by this $10.9 billion. And Bayer also settled Wednesday, um, this was of course last month, but the recent dicamba drift litigation for payment of up to 400 million. And so dicamba is an herbicide as well, and Monsanto developed it. Um, it's called Extend, Flex Cotton and Extend Soybeans, which are genetically modified crops resistant to dicamba. So it's been approved for, for over the top application since 2016, and it's caused and marked increase in dicamba utilization. So we've had Bayer settle um, this past month. So this is, these are big, big things to know about. Um, and a portion of the PCB water litigation. So I had to look up some of these things, the polychlorinate biphenols, which it's also created by Monsanto, manufactured since between 1930s and 1977. Interestingly, how things are now coming to light and are actually being resolved. Maybe it's our energy of what we're all creating here, right? It's the container of awareness that a lot of us are writing petitions, creating awareness and sharing our voice. So I believe in the power of voice and I'll just continue a little bit more. Bayer Monsanto will make a payment of 8.8 .8 billion to 9.6 billion to resolve the current roundup litigation, including an allowance expected to, to cover unresolved claims. So I'm gonna end it at that because it's quite a long um, and very interesting article. I'm gonna put it into the chat right now, if it's not already been done. But um, yeah, this is a part of our movement to know and be in the know. Great, thank you so much, wonderful. Yeah, I just wanna make a note of um, what Ryan Kay said here in the chat box. He was watching a frontline doc. And um, uh, so this is really, this is very apropos, very timely. There, there has been an established connection between people that are getting COVID and glyphosate. So what glyphosate does is it chelates minerals out of the body, kills the biome, the microbiome, essentially starts to kill our immune system. So when we have a depressed, who's getting COVID? People that have suppressed, depressed immune systems. So this is, you know, all the more, um, you know, underscoring and importance of having this conversation with us today. So I'm so glad you're here. And I want to segue now to you, Rebecca Johns, because we made the decision in, uh, well, we launched last week to really stop our letter writing campaign to um, General Mills all these months and start a petition and really, you know, collect and gather and galvanize our voice together. So Rebecca, would you come on and share a bit about that petition? Absolutely, my honor, Stephanie. Hello, everybody. Aloha, Rebecca Johns from Southeast Michigan. I'm a proud brand partner in Diamond and a proud member of the Council for the Million Mom Movement. So as Stephanie shared, historically what we've done as a group is use Fierce Fridays, thanks to Stephanie's inspiration to do these weekly calls, for education and awareness but also a lot of people out there are saying, you know, how can I make a difference? I'm shopping, I'm changing my lifestyle, I'm getting educated, I'm waking up personally, but how can I help be part of something that makes a change in the land of consumerhood? And so we have, for months now, had a letter writing campaign where you've provided in these Fierce Friday calls your email address, and we've provided you a template so that you can write to General Mills and say, listen, I'm not happy with the level of glyphosate in these cereals. This is dangerous and I'm asking you do something about it as an individual. But recently we've made an important decision and I think galvanize is a really great word, Steph, because together the compounded effect is always greater. The synergy of us working together is always greater than the parts of us working independently. So we've gone, we've shifted our energy from the individual writing campaign 
to an online petition. And we'll get that link for you in the comments of this chat. But the petition is gathering a thousand signatures. And those thousand signatures once collected, we will print and send into General Mills. The interest is the same. It's to say, listen, we cannot endorse you as a corporation any longer. We're asking that you remove from the shelves what is on the shelves that's contaminated and we all know it, and that you replace it immediately with contaminant-free alternative cereal. So your voice matters and you don't have to be wondering, well, what's my one voice going to do? Be a voice that's part of a movement and then your voice is like that drop in an ocean. You are just one drop, but together we can create a tidal wave. Um, so the petition will be posted for you in the chat. Please sign it, please share it. And if you have questions or ideas, please communicate with us as the Million Mom Movement Council because this is our minds is one of many petitions to come because we know that while glyphosate is a primary problem in our food sources and in our illnesses and our culture, we also know that preservatives and food coloring and plastic, and there's just so much as um, people who want to be difference makers in our own lives and for our common culture, there's so much to do so much to take action on. And we expect that this ipetitions.com platform that we've uh, created now will be the place where we put our petitions and ask for support and work together linking arm in arm to make a much greater difference than any one of us could make individually. Yay, thank you so much. Yes, if someone, I see you're in a car, Rebecca, so if someone could, could grab that link for the petition, that would be huge. So it's my dream, you, if you've been here before, you may have heard me utter that it's my dream that we do indeed grow this to a million fold. Okay, that is our work here in the Million Mom Movement. I'm dedicated to that, but I can't do it without you. Um, it's not possible. None of us can. We all, together, we are so much more powerful. So um, I want to segue now to uh, Ms. Jody Parker, because this is our final um, Meet the Council series. And um, I've been interviewing. It's been so fun these last couple weeks, but I'm passing the baton to Jody. Are you there, Jody? She's my fellow council member. I'm here. Sorry yeah. about that. I have somebody trying to get into the call and can't get in with the bit.ly link. So I was uh -oh. trying to copy, uh -oh. copy and paste the meeting ID and password for her. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Sorry about that. Hi, everyone. So sh shall I take it? Yes, yeah, she muted herself. So I will take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm, as she said, I'm Jody Parker. I'm one of the council members. And today I get to take my past tv producing experience and turn it around on my fellow my fellow council members and do some interviews which uh should be pretty exciting and so we have been doing this as a group um so that you guys know who is it behind the million mom movement behind what we're doing behind the marketing you're seeing and amy asked us a couple years ago to um assist her in this movement because as rebecca was just saying we can't do it by ourselves. We have to lock arms and we have to work together. And Amy um, does everything. Uh, she's superwoman, we're pretty sure. Uh, and she needed help. And we were all blessed enough to be the, the people that got to work with her and be a part of this. And so um, four of us have already been interviewed, but today I want to introduce you to our to Stephanie Dawn and to Carmela Velarde. Stephanie, I believe you, you are going to go first because she's going to end the call. So we're going to interview her first and then go to Carmela and then toss it back to Stephanie for the ending of the call. So she's already told you, you know, she's very passionate about the glyphosate topic because her son Zephyr, um, who is actually friends with my kids. So side note, get your kids involved too because our kids are creating a tribe and our kids are the ones that are going to change the world because we are leading them that way and so Steph I want to bring you in because you have been in the birth world you have been an activist from you know for mothers for a very long time and I want you to tell us a little bit but how did you get here how did 
what brought you to the birth world? What brought you to advocating for mothers? And what brought you to this business of helping people with superfoods and helping them get healthy? Take us through that journey and, and what this is, how you got here and what this business has done for you in being able to be a voice for people. Mm, thank you. Gosh, great question. Wow. So gosh, so Jasper's 16 now. And uh, so 16 years ago, I was pregnant with him. And I was a practitioner at the Agape International Spiritual Center in Los Angeles. I currently live uh, in Bainbridge Island, Washington. And I was sitting there um, listening to Reverend Michael one day. He's the founder of the Agape International Spiritual Center. And Reverend Michael kept using the metaphor of birth. He, he used it all the time talking about spiritual transformation. And there I am sitting there pregnant, a newly pregnant, I might add. And um, I was already teaching classes, spiritual classes, um, counseling people uh, around all manner of, you know, gosh, um, spirituality and, uh, uh, you know, manifesting your beloved, uh, being an artist, uh, all the things that I was doing that I, I'm a longtime artist, by the way, you can see my art right behind me, Radiate Love. <laughs> and so, um, uh, I was very taken that one day in service and I thought, wow, what if I started marrying what I was learning as a spiritual practitioner in the birth world? And it wasn't long before the idea sacred birth work dropped in and I started teaching, uh, I was already teaching workshops. So I started teaching these sacred birth workshops and my whole intention was to help parents to create a sacred birth, whatever that meant to them you know, to really work with them to, um, to unpack and uncover and inquire, like, what does that mean to you? What is, what is, what does it mean? The sanctity of birth. And, and, um, you know, and then I coined the term sacred birth keeper. Uh, you know, those of us who work in the birth world that really, um, understand the sacred nature of birth. And so I worked with expectant parents for many years. And then I started working with birth professionals all over the world. I took my business online. You know, I was in the, doing these really small groups, um, workshops in LA and New York. And then I took it all online and started working with midwives and doulas and birth arts practitioners all over the world. So it was a very exciting time. And uh, so I taught a lot. Uh, about spirituality and the sacred walk toward towards parenthood, and one of the things that I that I taught in my birth in that birth work was the importance of eating the rainbow and eating organic. So I already knew about the importance of organic living because I'd lived on an organic farm, and and I personally was already eating organic foods daily. But the missing piece for me was nutrition, daily nutrition. I didn't have anyone in my life that was educating me around that. And I, you know, it really wasn't until I was, someone shared a gift card with me four years ago that I really started looking very deeply at how my body needed daily nutrition. So I came on as a customer with Purium four years ago and I just wanted my transformation. You know, I was like 50 pounds overweight and, you know, 10 years postpartum and knew I needed a health upgrade and didn't know like, do I need a natural path or a nutritionist? Like what, 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 you know, what path to go down? So I was like, well, I'll do these cleanses and let's see how it goes. So I guess six months in and a lot, you know, quite a bit of weight loss, I was like, I need these products in my body for the rest of my life. I'm going to start sharing. And that's when our packs came with gift, co gift cards and codes. And so I had these codes. I'm like, I'll just start sharing them casually. And so, so those were the early beginnings, you know, and sharing casually had me ranking up in the company um, rapidly. And I didn't even know what I was doing back then. I didn't know anything about network marketing. I had no clue. That was not my world. But I was excited to be helping the women in my circles, the moms, and the, the, the at that point, I was a business coach. So, so I... I ended the, the birth work around 2014 and I put my stake in the ground as a sacred business coach. And that might seem like an, a bizarre segue, but that was, um, that was another sort of, my work has been all about empowerment, you know, and helping women to really be all that they can be, whether it's in birth and then in business and now, uh, health wise, you know? And so, uh, so yeah, I think that probably brings us to here, Jody. 
as concise a way as possible. Right. Sum up your entire life in the next five minutes <laughs> and go. Okay, so moving on from that. So you have had some success here at Puriam as a blue diamond. And for those of you who don't understand what that means, if you're not a part of the company, she's one of the leaders in the company. And so that that's a big deal to us. So I want you to talk about as you've become this mom on a mission and ranked up in the company and built your business and helped other people build their business, mm -hmm. that this is going to affect your family. What is, as, as this mom on a mission, what has this done for you? What has been the best part of being a mom on a mission and how it's affected you and the people around you and your family? Mm. Well, as exciting as it's been to offer, you know, to share my health transformation with people and to, um, and to help people with their health, just in general, that's been phenomenal and helping, you know, educate around glyphosate. What the, the point when everything changed for me is when Amy asked me to be the chair of the Million Mom Movement. That's when everything just like completely elevated for me because what happened, like I already was part of the Million Mom Movement before I even found out about the Million Mom Movement, <laughs> you know? I, I was that deeply concerned mom, that deeply concerned activist around what, what are we doing to our health? What are we doing to our food? What are we doing to our environment, you know, as a longtime environmental activist? And so when Amy asked me to do that, I saw the marriage of my work with moms and women and empowerment. So the, the, the economic empowerment, you know, my years as a business coach and the, um, the, the, the activists, my activist self, like the two merged. And so all that I'm doing with you all on the council and, and, and with the larger field and with my team, it's all uh, just a, a gorgeous confluence of who I've been as a, an activist and as a, um, a woman who deeply cares about how we're relating to the planet and to ourselves, body, mind, spirit, you know? This really, I'm so where I'm supposed to be right now, Jody, uh, in terms of leading this movement and really taking it to, to the million number, you know? Like, I totally believe in us totally believe in us that it's possible. I believe in the power of moms and dads that are in action, you know, to, to change the world. So yeah, there's my answer. I'd love that. Yes. Is everybody excited? Like, can I, can I get some like silent hand clapping on Zoom? <laughs> This is our world now, you guys. All right. So with that said, we're excited. It's amazing. We are in super challenging times. I, I think it is not an exaggeration to say that for everybody currently right now, this is going to be in the top three most challenging times in our lives when we look back. And so I want you to talk about what is that challenge for me? What is the most difficult, challenging aspect of being a mom on a mission in this world today? Ooh. Speaking my truth in a way that it can be received. You know this about me, Jody. Uh, I've used Facebook for years now to build my sacred birth work, to launch my sacred birth mentor program. Like Facebook has really, Facebook catapulted me globally with my business before I ever found Purium. So for those of you who've been following me for a while, like I share openly on Facebook what I think. I'm a provocateur. I know what I'm doing. And it's been, um, and I've, you know, I've been down a lot of rabbit holes over the last, decade um with my health freedom work and um and with the birth within the birth world actually and i've had a lot of um i've received a lot of negativity online for my beliefs because i'm very out with my beliefs and so uh i think that that's been the hardest piece for me is to speak my truth and to be received because what i'm noticing right now is when i speak my truth online um, and people don't know me well, they make assumptions about who I am or what I think or what I believe. 
they'll, you know, they think I'm a certain political, you know, going a certain political way, or they might think I don't care because of my beliefs. And so that, that is like, that kind of hurts. That makes me go, hmm, I'm not connecting the way that I want to be. And so I realize that I can't be liked by everyone and that's okay. I'm not really here to be liked. I'm here to change lives. <laughs> you know, the, Dave Sandoval, he says that all the time, you know, he's here to save lives is what he says all the time. So I, um, how to be an activist online and, and be received. That's probably my greatest challenge right now is to, uh, create conversations and foster dialogue and you're really you're epic at this jody follow jody if you're not right now jody's so good at this and i'm learning from her because <laughs> i have a lot of fire right hello fierce fridays i named this i have a lot of fire and sometimes that fire it burns people so dialing back the fire you know when it, tuning into how, how fierce to be that's my challenge right near right now um, because so many people are motivated by fear and I uh, are, are choosing making choices motivated by fear and I've done so much work inside of myself to to alleviate fear and mitigate fear and and really choose love and so um, so that's really my work right now is how to be an activist how to choose love and how to change lives all rolled into one <laughs> we're going to sum up here. I'm going to ask you one final question to sum up. Okay. There's a book called Illusions by a man named Richard Bach, and he has my favorite quote, and I'm going to throw the quote at you. You teach best what you most need to learn. Mm -hmm. So based on what you just said about that challenge, if you were teaching yourself and all of us who are listening today how to be heard at this time, what would be your advice? Mm, brilliant question. Wow. Oh. Well, it all comes down to communication. I think that I could make a choice to not communicate my heart and my truth because of the negativity coming at me. So my work right now is to really finesse how I communicate and to foster relationships in terms of how I relate to in the comments section and, you know, massage people's people are super charged right now. And they respond to me. Some aren't, you know, there's a, quite a few that aren't, they get it. They hear me. They, you know, are making their comments and the ones that are, that are um, in fear, I really have to work with myself to finesse how I am communicating with them to, um, you know, I think about the Celestine prophecy. I don't know for those of you who have read it, but we're talking about books. Um, there's a, a character that like changes his mind on a dime in that book, a very powerful character. So our work is to really like affect that, that change. And so, because people are really entrenched in their beliefs and, you know, my work is always about questioning what's believed, questioning authority, questioning the overarching and dominant paradigm that we're living in. That's really at the heart of all of my work for these past decades. We're living in a dying paradigm. And so how do I, help people wake up with kindness, with gentleness, with an open heart. So that's my work right now. I think that's all of our work right now for those of us who deem ourselves to be woke. How woke are we really if we're creating enemies, you know? So I don't want to create enemies, you know? I want to help people to, um, to see what I see. And uh, it's not easy. It's not an easy walk. It's not a walk for the meek. I think we got to be incredibly courageous and um, summons our courage. I have to summons courage to post you guys. <laughs> Jody, I think you can relate to that because <laughs> I see your post. So, and I'm sure many of you do as well that are here. Can you relate? Like, can you put a one in the comments if you feel like you want to speak your truth and, and you have to summons courage to post right now to share what's on your heart? I have a lot of people in my world that don't, that know me, but they don't know me. 
So I'm taking a risk every time I post these days. And sometimes I fall flat on my face, but I got to take that risk. So take the risk, you guys. I'm here supporting you in taking risks and being imperfect. You know, I, I'm, I'm an imperfect human. I'm the first to admit it. <laughs> Thank you, Jody, for those amazing questions. That was brilliant. I'm going to, I'm going to sum up what you just said by saying, you know, none of us are perfect. We live in an imperfect world, but the one thing we can do is be perfectly forgiving. Thank you. And, and, and so if we can, if we can do that for ourselves and for others, then I, in my humble opinion, think that's how we change the world. So thank you, Stephanie. That was, that was powerful. Can we, can you drop her some emojis guys? <laughs> Thanks you guys. That support. She's she's a high touch person in a high tech world. So we got to send her some virtual hugs. So we love you. Thank you so much. I am going to pivot now and move to our next council member. She do we save the best for last, Carmela? Cuz you are the last one on the council that is getting interviewed. So everyone, Carmela is a almost blue diamond with Perium. She's she's darn glad. she is it exists already. It just needs to be manifested here into the physical plane. And she, like the rest of us on the council, is passionate about health and passionate about helping those around her. But she's come at it from a different direction. And that's what makes this so brilliant as a group, because as a group council, but also as a group Million Mom movement, we're all coming with our own unique perspectives and our own direction. And, you know, the only person who doesn't get anywhere is the person at the bottom of the mountain telling everybody else that their path to the top is the wrong path. So we, I want you, Carmela, to come on and to tell us your path. How did you get here? What brought you here today with us as a mom on a mission? Wow, thank you. <laughs> a beautiful story, Stephanie. I got to know you more today, know your heart more, and I loved it. I love working with these women, and thank you for this question, Jody. Um, yeah, I definitely have always truly believed from leading from the front. That's what I was taught growing up. I was taught not to follow people. I was taught to educate myself, research, and think for myself. I'm first generation. My parents came here educated and as nuclear engineers. And so they really thought education was an important part of me being an American here. And um, they didn't know a lot about nutrition, though. They definitely took on the American sad diet and fed me a lot of dairy in Pennsylvania, which is where I grew up. And it wreaked havoc on me. It was horrible. I was hospitalized. I was prescribed. I was... Um, told I had ADHD, I got all kinds of, um, like, all kinds of medication. And my parents chose to let me research it together with them and choose. And I did. And actually, it was an experiment all throughout my childhood. And I traveled a lot um, to and from Asia. And I always thought it was just, you know, me traveling and my body. And I just got a really... Um, experimental experience with my body growing up and seeing what health was like in my country in Asia, which was extremely natural and naturopathic. And I became a licensed massage therapist for the past 18 years because I saw natural medicine through body work was so important to my grandmother. She had a therapist in her house every other day. So I saw natural healing, acupuncture, herbal medicine, and that was what I, where I came from. But my background, I'm Filipino, Spanish, and Chinese. The Spanish diet was extremely heavy in meat. And so there was a lot of gout, cholesterol, high blood pressure, all kinds of health issues I saw and grew up with. And I was American and, you know, more revolutionary. So I studied more about veganism, vegetarianism. And I, through college, discovered how to really work and heal my body naturally through food as medicine. And so I went through psychology, that was my major in, in college, and I was so fascinated by, you know, that power of the mind, but then I said, oh my goodness, the power of the body cannot be disconnected. So I really became um, a holistic health counselor, and I have been now for 18 years, because the mind-body connection to me was so important in my self-discovery of healing my body, um, 
and then becoming a mom. So I opened up a yoga studio with my mother in Manhattan from 03 to 2010. And I hosted my own cleanses. I hosted teacher trainings where I got involved and I learned about Ayurveda, shamanic healing, um, meditation, yoga, all kinds of amazing things. And energy healing is real. We are really powerful. And the things that we're not told, it's because these new models, these paradigms that we're taught are not okay with me as a mom. I have a seven-year-old and now a 10-year-old girl. And um, as I'm raising them, I was so passionate about breastfeeding my children. My mom was not able to. She had inverted nipples and she formula fed me. My sister was formula, not formula fed the whole time and her immune system is completely different. So I definitely believe in the power of breast milk. So I breastfed both of my children for three years each. That's six years, two kids. I'm, I'm proud mama of saying that my kids don't have the immune health issues I grew up with. And I went all organic when I was pregnant with my mom, with my daughter, hundred, you know, really, really focused on it. And they live and love the Purim lifestyle, man. They've heard it since they were young. So <laughs> that's all they know. And I tell them, mommy was sick, like really sick. I'm very still to this day, guys, when you're young and you grow up with this, um, gut dysbiosis, you have it, a constitution that is not strong. And I know because my sister and my dad and my mother, and they didn't have the health issues that I did because I ate a lot of sugar. I ate a lot of processed foods. Um, I was an athlete and I thought quick foods, quick sugars, you know, I didn't know dairy, nothing. And they just kept prescribing me. So this circle. And so, yeah, to this day now, I'm just so proud to be part of this movement because I want to be part of what is changing the current education field. This is the platform for lifestyle education that is missing, that's comprehensive. And I'm just so happy to be here. <laughs> that's amazing. So I want you to take that this, this step further. This is the platform. This is the platform where we have economic empowerment and health education and a tribe of people around us to support us in being those leaders. So talk about how this passion has for you turned into a viable business. Well, I do like business. <laughs> I, I tended towards that side, even though I was um, a licensed healer, tuned healer, I always tended to be promoting a community marketing a community. So I put down my healing, you know, tools and I started focusing on marketing and branding my people, my wellness center. And I thought, wow, like I can make a bigger impact that way because I love healing. I can do it and I could do it for my family. I'm actually getting Reiki two and three so I can tune my children. Like I really believe in healing. However, I believe in impact. Because, you know, I was brought to America with this big vision, this big dream from my parents. So I have a lot to live up to. And legacy, like a lot of us talk about with our building our businesses, um, here in a network marketing platform, it is so different than any other business model. And I've worked it differently. I've been an independent contractor. I've been an independent actual performance artist since I was eight years old. I've managed my husband's DJ career um, and music producing career from... 1998 until about 2010. So I'm in the music industry world for a long time. I've been a singer and songwriter um, in different record labels I've been published. And I really believe in the way we impact here. So actually my gift to the world is music and um, promoting healing because their vibration, I mean, take out the mind, right? Triggers are from the mind. We're thinking of all these different sides to a story. Which one do I agree with? Well, where does it resonate in your body? Where, where, what feels good? What feels right for you in your family? If you're not vibrating high, if you're not vibrating first before your thoughts, then you're not really going to be thinking clearly. And so um, the platform for my business has been really just a direct reflection of my authenticity about what I want to do. And I, when I share this with my brand partners, they, it's traction marketing. I was branded before social media came in, so people knew I was all about holistic health because of my wellness center. Then when I launched into network marketing and I shared on the platform, they were like, wow, I didn't know you had this healing story. 
So it impacts people when you're authentic. It impacts people when you can get raw and vulnerable with your truths. And I, as a singer, you know, believe that the voice is, is so untapped. Like this fifth chakra, when we're able to be honest with our vulnerabilities, it's our strength. It's what attracts people to want to hear you. So when you are using our platform and we encourage social media, it's because it works and it's because like it could be shared. So I highly encourage everybody to use it too. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot here. So I'm going a little bit off, off, off the way we've been doing the interviews because I want to follow that train of thought that you were just talking about because I see a theme happening in this call and I'm listening to that theme. Um, and that theme really is about that throat chakra, that speaking your truth, listening, communicating. So I want you to, to, to say to everybody here on the call today, I want you to talk about how you get, how do I want to word this? Because I want to communicate clearly. How do you want to explain to the people on this call who are listening to you today about opening that, about speaking your truth in a connected heart fashion so that you're bringing that compassion, you're bringing that love in, but also being willing to tackle the hard issues and being willing to go right up to that edge and, and create cognitive dissonance. How do you handle that and find that balance within your team, within your social media sphere, within the people you're connecting, and how can you help the others here listening on the call to do the same? Mm, okay. <laughs> how do we activate the throat, so sh throat chakra? So um, I'm going to go back to it starting with you. It all starts with you and where you are in your own body. We get to, in this movement, focus on transformational health coaching for ourselves and for others. So clear your system, create clarity. The only way we're able to do anything in this world with what we have, and I see people rock what they have and they don't have a lot, like the people in third world countries, and they're doing great things with their life. When we have so much and we're not, look at ourselves, look in the mirror. And so, yeah, it's challenging. Yeah, it's not easy to look at the truth of yourself. You need it every day. Your, your competition every day is yourself. You need to look at where you are today, where you want to go. And then that's how you're going to be sharing with others anything. Like I'm just sharing where I am, where I'm going, and who wants to come with me. But today, I'm not perfect. Just like Stephanie said, we are all imperfect. We're all working towards clarity and healing and through Purion, my goodness, so much clarity and vibration comes through and so much ability to be able to be the voice. We are the voice for the company. We, they don't have, I always say we don't have celebrity endorsements, commercial advertisements. We are the brand. So who are, who would you like to see embody the purity? Who would you imagine yourself being to be that embodiment of a role model? And let's continue to work towards that and not be in competition with each other because everyone's on their own journey. Everybody has their own battles. So when you voice yourself, man, is it beautiful? How many different types of voices there are? You know, I studied voice, so I feel like I'm tapping, tapping on that. And there are times where I got stuck when I was a mom and I just was all about the children and not about me anymore, not about my body. I, that's my postpartum first cleanse story. I posted my pictures of me really bloated 30 pounds over and then I slimmed down. I was like, look at this. <laughs> my friends were like, oh my goodness. I didn't know you got that bad. That <laughs> got heavy. And I said, well, now you know, this is what happens when you're, you know, just because you're Asian doesn't mean you're going to always stay slim. It's the truth. And you know what? That's my mirror. I'm able to share my mirror and the truth. And it really worked. It launched my business. And I'm so so grateful for the opportunity to be honest. I love this. I love this call. This makes me so happy. So final question. I'm going to give you the same final question that I gave to Stephanie. If you teach best what you most need to learn, what is it? What is the, the final closing statement that you want to give everybody to help yourself and everybody who's listening today? Okay, so final closing teaching. So lead from the front. 
There we go. I, we are a group here of educated women, right? And men, and we're an activist group. Don't look and wait for anybody. That's what I say, because a lot of us are, we're waiting for somebody to be that person who we're looking up to saying, that's who we need to be. Well, why aren't we? You know, if you're not seeing it, then be it. And I really feel like um, this is a group of leadership. And if we're gonna be those for others, a leader for others, a leader of leaders, then we need to show up for ourselves, like I keep saying, all comes back to us. But then don't worry about every, what everyone thinks. You know, as activists, we're always gonna get flack of, and different opinions. Who cares? This is our time to make the shift. You saw with the, the lawsuits happening. That's because people are voicing themselves. So go with where, you know, what is important for you and your family and show people the right way. Show people by example. Be the lighthouse. Beautiful, Carmela. Thank you so much. Thank you to Stephanie. Thank you to all you guys listening. Thank you for letting me get to be on the other side and do the interviews. That was fun. I appreciate that. Stephanie, Don, I am going to toss it back to you. Sweet. Wow. So rich. Oh, I love getting to know you all. It's beautiful. Ah, okay. Great job, Jody. Excellent. So for those of you who are still with us, thank you for staying on the Zoom because I've got something, I've got an important announcement to make, okay? So a couple of days ago, we, uh, we, I became aware of a, a group health reset happening for prenatal and breastfeeding friendly folks, okay? And I got really excited. I brought it to the council. The council was all like, yes! So we are doing it. We are doing our first Million Mom Movement sponsored group health reset for women who are pregnant or are postpartum and nursing. Okay. And we are so excited because this is the first of many, I can just feel it. And so I am already in multiple conversations with moms in my communities, in my circles. And, um, and so we, I want to bring on Naiva. Are you there, Naiva? Yeah. To share more about it. Hi. So I'm super excited about this opportunity. And when Stephanie kind of pointed it out to me, I got super excited because I first started as a postpartum mom. And I just thought it was so incredible that August is actually Breastfeeding Awareness Month. So in honor of Breastfeeding Awareness Month, we're going to be doing a 30-day group transformation for women that are either pregnant or postpartum or breastfeeding. And <clears throat> all moms can obviously participate, but we have special protocols to help um, women during this time. And so I'm super excited to be partnering up. There's a couple ladies that have already been doing this in the past and that we're already running with this group transformation. And so um, we have the honor to have Colette here on the line with us today. And she's done the transformation a couple of times herself while being a breastfeeding mom. And I think also during her pregnancy, she used the product. So Colette, I'd love for you to come on for a few minutes and just tell us your experience of how Perium has helped you through your pregnancies and then also as a postpartum mom. Oh, we can't hear you. Hold on a second. Oh, I think I could hear you. You just turned up your volume. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here. It's so nice to hear everybody speaking, and I love being part of the Million Mom movement. And yes, I've been using the products now for about four years. I started initially at seven months when I was pregnant with my son. Um, I was not a true healthy eater. I didn't read labels. I didn't know anything about glyphosate or anything truly about superfoods. I thought I ate clean, but I ate a pretty standard diet. Um, and the first things I noticed um, into my 10 days, the initial 10 days of my 30 days of my pregnancy with my son, was that he, I was so tight and so big, I couldn't breathe. And I remember just like within the first 10 days, realizing I could make it up both set of stairs at my house and being able to breathe. And that the way my, the water was being carried in my body and my sleep, I was sleeping you know, soundly. And, you know, I went in to start um, doing a little more 
uh, studying and learning how all this worked within our bodies and it really just drove me and so I had a really beautiful birth natural birth with my son um, and I did do um, I did ultra lifestyle transformation during nursing with him and I did two um, while I was nursing with my daughter I did I nursed her till 14 months um, and I did them, I've used the products consistently for four years. And, you know, so definitely a huge thing I noticed that changed after having my daughter um, was, you know, the energy levels to keep up after, with, you know, a tiny top baby and the toddler. And, um, you know, the cravings of what you have really help. And my breast milk supply just actually went up, um, you know, if I was consistent using my products and adding that green barley juice. I just really loved it. And I really loved that the products actually help. I noticed, especially with my second um, pregnancy, the elasticity in my skin and the, um, I didn't get stretch marks really. And that my skin always just stayed nice and bright. And after the baby, it really just, you know, it held its shape a lot. And that was just something, you know, and as moms try to say, my, I know I'm nourishing my baby and that's the whole goal. But at the same time, you, you do kind of want your bodies to look nice and tight and pretty too. So <laughs> I mean, I love these products and I've helped so many moms um, through this. I work at a mommy gym and so I constantly have moms and their children on these products and, you know, just seeing the shift in them and their energy and even the children, you know, having these products, it's, it's just so great. So I'm so happy to be able to be supporting more women and with all of you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Colette, for sharing and so we want to invite all of you, if you're here, then you are part of the Million Mom Movement Council, the Million Mom Movement. And so um, the hashtag we've been using is we are the Million Mom Movement. You're all included in that. And so we wanted to announce this today because we want you to participate if you are currently either pregnant or breastfeeding mom. And then we want you all to also have the opportunity to reach out to other people in your community that might either be an expecting mom or a, a new mom or even moms that have small toddlers and we can all do this together and support each other. So we have a few different protocols that moms can follow, um, whether they're pregnant or breastfeeding. We have the one shake a day protocol or more of two shakes a day or the accelerated version where you're still eating a lot of food throughout the day. You're still incorporating 2,100 calories of food um, and ideally flex foods, you know, gearing towards healthier habits is always a good one. But during breastfeeding, we're not so much cutting calories, it's less restrictive, and mostly it's really fun and supportive. So we want to um, invite you all to participate in this. And Stephanie Don just dropped the link in the comments um, to be able to join us there. It's, um, so I'm super excited for that, and we want to invite you all to participate. And one of the other people with Colette um, was Liv Irons, and they're the two ladies that kind of already had this going. And so I reached out to them last week and asked if we, as the Million Mom Movement, could, you know, jump on board with them in August for this group transformation and help support it and expand it to the rest of our community. So we're super excited to offer this for the month of August. So we'll start August 1st. So please promote it this week. Um, get those ordered in by the end of the month so we can help those moms get started with us and um, join us in that group. We'll be posting some information also in the Million Mom Movement official group on Facebook. So if you're looking for some, um, you know, social media type stuff that you can share or things that you could text out to some of the mamas you're sharing with, then please join us there at Million Mom Movement official and I'll be posting some of the memes that we've made. So thank you so much for joining us here. I'm going to give it back to you, Stephanie. Yay. I'm so excited about this. We are going to help so many moms, you guys. Woo! It just really gets my heart aflame. You, you, you heard that I get fired up about ways that we can help moms. And so many moms were not taught about nutrition. I wasn't taught about nutrition when I was pregnant with my children. And I certainly wasn't taught um, or handheld in any way once they were here on the planet. And so that's us. We're the ones we've been waiting for, right? We're the ones that can help moms um, with what, what, what to eat. What do I eat? How, do I, how can I cleanse when I'm nursing? I, I don't know how you feel, but if I was a new mom thinking about cleansing, I'd probably be a little bit freaked out about that. So we get to do a lot of hand-holding and share our experiences as women who, I've been cleansing now for four years with Purium. So that, 
that holds a lot of weight for people who are just brand new. So never discount the answered prayer that you might be for someone in your circles to help them transform their health, particularly the moms, okay? So thank you all so much for being with us today. I wanna open, we have like three minutes left. Does anyone have any questions about this cleanse? Um, I'd like to just hear your voice, any comments about how you're feeling, about what you've received today. We'd love to hear from you. Don't be shy. Just come off mute. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Um, I want to thank you, Stephanie and Carmela, so much uh, for giving your guys a side of the story. Um, I'm uh, right now. I'm speaking to somebody who has two children herself, and I'm getting in contact with a lot of other soon-to-be moms on my Facebook. I am a younger man. I'm about 23, so a lot of people my age are having their first kids or their second kids. My sister currently is pregnant with her first child, so it's uh, this is all really great information um, to share with them because I am also a brand partner myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just um, a great opportunity to allow myself to be that open door uh, for those that are close to me. Yay. Oh, Oscar. Wonderful. Thank you for being here. Wow. And you're not a dad yourself? Uh, I am not. Um, I don't look uh i don't see myself having children anytime soon but um i do support all those nephews and nieces and all those kids in my life and also those parents um they're all amazing oh so you're an amazing uncle uh soon to be yes of course okay right on beautiful well so glad you're here please keep coming back oscar and um uh invite two friends everybody <laughs> that's how absolutely this works. i invited one today but she unfortunately couldn't make it but uh you guys gave me so much great information Oh, right on. Thanks for being here. We're here every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard. So yes, this Zoom will be continuing with no end in sight. Great. All right. Well, we're at the top of the hour. I want to honor our hour-long commitment. Thank you so much for being here with us. Please come back next week. I'm not, I don't have like a, I don't know what we're going to do next week. So we're going to surprise you. We're going to get together uh, as a council and determine what is our theme next week. Join the Million Mom Movement official group on Facebook to hear more about what's coming for the next Fierce Friday. Follow us on Instagram, uh, Million Mom Movement on Instagram, and we'll be sharing more there all week long. All right. Thanks for being here. Many blessings to you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.